working group, each person would discuss or come up with one or two things. At each table would be post-it notes. From there, they write them down. They put them on a, in a central location, maybe on a whiteboard or a wall or something like that. And then I'm going to go through, uh, once they're done doing that, I'm going to go through and review each, each one of those things they put up. And then from there, because I really think when you, when you look at PCA, it really exemplifies all the, the tools that are, are going to be provided are things that can, are going to help you perform at a higher level. So we're going to tie those principles into PCA um, and how it's going to really increase performance standards. Because I think some people, you know, and we've talked about this in the Google workshops, that some people believe it's about, like, you know, giving everybody hugs and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's going to help us perform better. Um, so we'll discuss that. Uh, then from there, we'll go back to our, our, our locations, and I would go into the, um, the mistake ritual. And the mistake ritual for me is a, is a really powerful tool because, you know, I would share. So when I first started coaching, I was absolutely horrible at this. You know, when kids made a mistake, uh, I would get, I would over explain it. Um, I would I would over coach them essentially and and the thing that I would like to do for this mistake ritual and I think Kelly may have done it in one of her workshops I think it'd be really fun to actually model it so if you had somebody from the class come up and actually intentionally make a mistake and then model what that looks like the way I used to do it which would be basically a whole bunch of coaching and and raising my voice and telling them what they did wrong as opposed to the mistake ritual that PCA promotes, which is developing a, a, a physical manifestation of it, whether it's tapping your head or your arm, as well as I think it'd be it, I think it'd be fun to come up with a verbal phrase that the people could leave the workshop with. Like the one I used to use was called uh, "fix it and forget it." So in other words, once the, once the mistake was made, the kid would come out of the game. We briefly address it, and then from there, it's forgot. You're on to the next play. You're on to the next down. Did you say um, fix it and forget it? Yes. What if I don't know how to fix it? Well, that's a, okay. If you don't know how to fix it, then I think you, for that point, I would just, if I'm coaching, I would just reinforce the positive. I wouldn't even address it at that point then. Okay. For instance, I'll, I'll give you an example. As a, as a football coach, say a, a defensive back, you know, the, the kid runs a pattern down the field and he's beat for a touchdown, but the kid's too high in his back pedal, right? Kid comes out of the game, hey, a little lower in your back pedal, fix it and forget it. Done. Because yeah. I do think it's important to just give a brief statement about what occurred, but you don't want to overdo it either and dwell on the negative. And I think, you know, even with the with starting a workshop, I wanted to think of like an athletic utopia because I think if you, this whole workshop to me needs to focus on the positive because if you don't and you start talking about the problems that coaches and players and everybody faces, it could turn into a gripe session real quick and get off the tracks. So that's the, the theme of what I'm going to do is, or what I'd like to do, would be all positive, and then tools they'd leave the workshop with. Like the mistake ritual, for instance, everybody that leaves there that day will have a physical manifestation of a mistake ritual they're going to develop, and they're going to have, and they, you know, we could put them back into groups to come up with a phrase, fix it and forget it, or uh, anything along those lines that they could use with their teams and athletes once, once they leave the workshop. So that's just just briefly. That was the, the intro, and then the like a you know the mistake the mistake rituals the the piece of I guess of the elm tree that I looked at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So Chris, it sounds like that's what you were prepared to share with us yes. this morning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so Kelly, welcome back. Thanks. Sorry about that. Uh, that's okay. So so what what Chris uh, took me through and what you joined, uh, he 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 described how he would do the opening. Okay. Didn't so much actually, you know, lead lead a lead it as in a workshop, right? And then, um, and then the mistake ritual, similar, described how he would uh, present, um, you know, facilitate uh, around the mistake ritual, um, and so Chris, let me let me ask you a couple questions. Yeah, um, uh, um, when you say you know you 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 think it's important to keep it all positive, yes. Um, and for your introductory activity, when you asked us, you know, you, 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 you know, uh, to what what would you improve about this organization? What is it, what is the your for your respective team or sport? 
or program that you run. Or okay. so, so here's what came to mind for me, and I th because I think a lot of coaches would respond this way. Yeah, go they'd ahead. Say, they'd say, get the parents off of our back and out of our way and let us coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think you know. I think um, I, my my observation is you know when you say let's let's keep this all positive and not let it turn into a gripe session. Yeah. I I, I, I wanted to point out that that opening question um, could invite some <laughs> some gripes right out right right out of the gate. You know. Yeah. So yeah. which 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 I don't think is I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I just want to. Um, make sure that it's what you want and where you want it to sure. go. Yeah. One of the things that I do to start out the workshops with, I think, a similar intention. A lot of times, I'll ask, "What are some of your greatest challenges?" When I when I get the coaches up and moving around the room and they're discussing with a partner, my the very first thing I say is, "Turn to a partner and give them what's your biggest challenge as a coach." Yeah, and it can be specific or general, and that can get the same answers out, but no. it doesn't turn into what do you want to fix, what do you want to improve, you know? So right, 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 exactly, exactly. Yeah. I guess my train of thought on that, you guys are exactly right. Um, my train of thought was like the parents thing. You know, so somebody bring, brings up the parents. But in PCA, you're, that's going to be addressed in this workshop, how to deal with the parents. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine a, a situation where the parents were actually behind you and supporting you and promoting you? You know, I had a great idea the other day with a coach because we were talking about this. And he said, how about this? There's one game a year where when the team runs out, the team runs out, and guess who comes out right behind them? The parents, the cousins, the, the people involved in this. If everybody was pushing in the same direction, it would be like an athletic you know, utopia, a dream world almost. But imagine how powerful that would be if you had the parents, the cousins, everybody before the game. You had your, your team meeting, and guess who's in the team meeting for that game? The parents are right there. You leave the huddle, you leave the tunnel, you go out, and out comes the parents and the band and the choir and just everybody. So it's just that unified front that would be it'd be like a it'd be a really beautiful scene actually. You know? Yeah. So so Chris, uh, I I think that's really interesting and um, I think that's cool. The parents get to run through with the the, the kids one game. Um, yeah. I, I I wonder if. Um, I, I'm thinking about this for myself. Like Kelly and I, when we work with you trainers, we we take your thoughts and we go, okay, well, how how, how would I incorporate that? You know, how right. how would I use that? You know, because we're often we we like these ideas. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking I'm thinking, um, you, you know, if, if you're going to talk from the standpoint of an athletic utopia, yeah, you know, um, as opposed to ask asking for the the things to improve, ask what would that look like? Mm -hmm. you, you know, what what what. That's a great phrase. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then and then it might be then 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 the the responses they they might give you they might I don't know it, rather than gosh get the parents off our back they might say well the parents are are aligned right. and they turn yeah. their kids over yeah. to us and they 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 cheer and support yeah. but they don't coach from the sidelines they don't second guess you know so they might right. say something like that they might say our, our kids uh, show up to practice uh, mm -hmm. prepared. And um, energized and well nourished, yeah. and give us their focus for two hours. Sure. Um, uh, the community, the local newspaper, um, doesn't judge us solely on our one loss record. And when our our kids give a great effort and come up short, you know they praise us and acknowledge us. You, you know wh whatever they you know. If, uh, th th I, again, I, I'm just thinking. Um, I'm thinking this through for myself. Um, you know what direction I might uh, experiment with um, if I were bringing your idea to it. So, well, you okay, know, maybe, so, maybe utopia. You could you could replace that word with dream world. You could replace it. You know what I mean? Just to even target it a little bit. Better. The ideal. What 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 would be the ideal ideal uh, right. athletic environment for for you to coach in? Right. You know. Uh, right. You know. You could say the ideal culture. You know because. Absolutely. You know, you could start talking about culture. Culture is the way we do things here. You know, exactly. and what what for you as a coach would be the ideal culture to to coach in? Mm -hmm. You know, and you, exactly. so yeah, I think it's I think there's tons of potential there with how you opened. And I just say that because here is I mean, when you're talking about creating a, just the, the ideal athletic environment. The way that I've dealt with, I'll give you an example, the way that most people have dealt with parent issues, here's how you deal with it. 
you meet with the coach, and then you complain to the coach, or the coach complains to you about how crazy the parents are, right? You go, right. these parents are killing me, but you don't really try to lead it. You just complain about it, basically, instead of trying to set that stage or the culture. Like, really, let, you know, PCA talks about that. Yes. So... Okay, um, so then let's see. Uh, regarding mistake ritual, fix yeah. it and forget it. Yeah, you know, uh, at, at w one point in the last year, I saw Jim Thompson describe mm -hmm. mistake ritual as a gesture phrase. Gesture okay. phrase. Because it really is, and that's what you're talking about. When you say fix it and forget it, you're bringing a phrase in, okay? When we, when we say flush it, yeah, it's it's both a phrase. Flush it is is words, a phrase, and then there's also a physical gesture that goes along with it. See, that's what I would like if they peep, if I presented that part, yeah. I would want by the time I was done, everybody in their minds should have a physical manifestation of it in a phrase, and I think both are important though. Yes, and so does Jim yeah. Thompson. Right. So, exactly. so, yeah. so when you so when you present, fix it and forget it as an example. Yes. Have have the physical gesture that goes along with it. I don't know if it's if it's if it's a if it's a hammer, you know, right. if, you know. But what what physical gesture conveys uh, right. fixing well, it? it? Right, exactly. In my case, it was just a tap on the head. Okay, was, okay. It, Fix it and forget it. Okay, yeah. so very good. So you're it on the same page as Jim Thompson there. Yeah, it wasn't very creative, but you know, I think it'd be neat though. That if you didn't have that, or if you didn't have this knowledge, that when you left, you'd go, okay, I'm gonna. This is something I can apply immediately the next time I coach kids. Right. And it's easy. It's like you know, you before practice one day, it's five, it's three minutes of your time, and you demonstrate it, you show them, and then you model it, and you're ready to roll with this, you know. Yeah, Chris. For 20 years, mistake ritual has been PCA signature tool. Yeah. And um, for for many people, it's it is indeed the 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 single takeaway that they want to implement right away after a workshop. You know, for a lot of for a lot of people, especially when the trainer has made it the the the, the signature tool in the workshop. So, right. um, okay, well, uh, I think those are the questions and comments I had. Um, yeah. Um, Kelly, wh where do you want to go from here? Well, I just wanted to find out from Chris. Um, we really wanted to give you an opportunity to model how you would present it. I love your ideas. I love the way you said, like, I would do this and I would do that. Yeah. But we were really wanted to give you this opportunity to practice as if we were your audience. So yeah. I just wanted to see if you would be comfortable doing a portion of that so we can see a little bit of how you would facilitate the workshop if we were an audience in front of you. Rather than just describing how you would do it if you had the opportunity, we want to give you the opportunity. Right, right, gotcha. Okay, so um, I guess I'll go back. I could go back to the intro. Okay. I, I'll do the intro. Okay. Okay, so I will. Can you see my slides on here? Because I, I pulled them up for you. So if I you, can. If you click on my box, you can see me big, and then you can, you know, wherever you need me to go. Are you comfortable doing that? Are you prepared to do that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. The only thing is, I, I, I can't manipulate your PowerPoint from here though, correct? Right. No, just tell me to click or tell me to go forward or backward. I understand it won't be as smooth as if you were doing it yourself, but that's okay. Right. Okay. Um, well, obviously everybody would be sitting in a room. Then mm -hmm. at that point, I would go around the room. Oh, if everybody could do this. Let me, let me yep. rephrase this. Yeah, that's good, Chris. You're switching into, now you're switching there into you facilitation okay. mode. Yeah. Welcome to the workshop. If everybody, What I'd like to know as we go around the room is, is your name, uh, what sport you've played, uh, and what sport you've coached. Okay. So, okay, I'll start. My name's Ruben, and I played basketball, football, baseball, and volleyball, and volleyball is the sport I'm coaching. Great. In addition to that, you know what? I'd look, where are you from, Ruben? I'm from Clovis, California. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I'm Kelly Kratz, and I played – I was a, a youth gymnast. I played field hockey, basketball, lacrosse. Okay. And now I, uh, I've coached lacrosse and basketball and youth soccer. And um, I am from Audubon, Pennsylvania. And I'm the parent of four youth athletes. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're going to do next is if I could everybody stand by the back wall, what we're going to do is we're going to count off by fours. 
So Kelly, if you'll go ahead and start counting off. Okay. One. <laughs> two. No. Ruben. Three, four, five. Th one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's have all the ones. The ones will go over to the left side of the room. The twos are going to go in the back. The threes are going to be over here. And let's put the fours right up front where I can watch them good. <laughs> Everybody spreads it out, does their thing. Mm -hmm. What I want you to start thinking about in your groups is this. I'm going to give you three minutes to think about this. Or four. Um, I want you to think about what is the ideal athletic environment? What's it look like? What's it feel like? What's it sound like? What are the parents like? I'm talking ideal, not, you know, not problems. We're talking the positive. What's that all look like to, to you guys as a group from that whole, that whole puzzle? Athletes, parents, community, paper, media, everybody, what's it look like? You're going to have note cards in the middle of your table. Actually, they're post-it notes. On those post-it notes, I'd like for you to write what that looks like in a word or a phrase. So take four minutes and do that. Once you're done with that, I want you to put it on the whiteboard in front of the room. Okay. okay so they do that. It goes up under the whiteboard. Um, and then from there... So, Chris, I'm going to give you four words that I... Like, I'm going to be four different people, okay? Okay, and go I'm, ahead. These, so, so my... Person number one, I put down, everybody's having fun. Yeah, right. Ideal culture. Uh, person number two said, the, the athletes, the participants exhibit great effort. Um, person number three wrote down, everybody's supporting each other. Right. Okay, and then person number four wrote down, um, uh, professionalism is exuded by all involved the officials the coaches the administrators you know parents uh, there's a there's a level of professionalism that they bring to it those those are all those are all, you know absolutely outstanding examples and and then if I could see Kelly's PowerPoint here yep okay so if you could click to the next slide, click again, then at this point, I think this would be a, the, the Kevin Durant clip. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, I would play that clip. Okay. Because I'm just getting, here's what we're doing right now. To me, this is like the appetizer. This is, we're trying to get everybody fired up, positive thoughts. Great things are going to occur. We're thinking great things. We're getting great things out of the workshop, and this is a great example of it. I mean, listening to Kevin Durant, Durant well, well, this provides ownership over it, you know what I mean? Over the mm -hmm. content. So I would play that. Okay. Next. Okay. Do you want me to play it? I didn't mean to say Kevin Garnett. I meant Kevin Durant. Okay. okay. Did you want me to play it? Yeah, play it. Okay. Oh, I don't my volume up, sorry. A rec league coach. That's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to stay home and, and help the kids out and, and be a coach. Good. Now, f from there, go to the next slide. Right. So we put these all up on the board. They're going to go back into their groups now. All right. I'm gonna, I would have reviewed all the things on the board at this point. So, like, mm -hmm. Ruben went over those. They're mm -hmm. all positive things. Those are all things, all things that in this workshop we're going to work towards attaining. We're going to talk about how to develop these things. And then... Uh, back to their, their stations or groups or teams, one, two, three, four. Again, come up with the positive coaches uh, and then sort of, you know, proceed from there. And that's, a, to be honest, that's about as far as I, I've gotten on that part. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's pause there because, okay. again, um, I got some questions for you, Chris. And, okay. Uh, I, I'm thinking, uh, again, think. Um, so, so when you have us write down on the sticky notes and post yeah. them somewhere, you know, you, you could have 10, 15 sticky notes up there. You sure. could have 150 sticky notes. It just depends on the size of your the group. I, I don't know. Kelly's probably told you that yeah. our participants, you know, you could have 10, you could have 200, right? I think 200 would be 200. That activity wouldn't work as well. Okay. Okay. So, so okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, secondly, um, when you talk about wetting our appetite and you know firing us up. To you know, because wow, wouldn't it be great to have that kind of uh, ideal yes, atmosphere? Right. Um, I, I think the, the the words you use um, 
you, you know, I, I want to caution you not to overpromise. Yeah, because yeah, you, you know, yet yet you know to 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 make them hopeful, Chris, like you did, and and maybe you can say, you know, we're going to talk about a model of coaching, mm -hmm. some principles, and some tools that are going to give us the best chance to achieve that kind of ideal atmosphere. Right. You know, you're right. you're not promising that it's going to happen. Yeah. Because it's not going to happen for everybody. Um, but you you are saying that this because PCA that's what we we feel we feel this gives us the best chance of having that kind of atmosphere, right? So, so subtle difference in terms of you know how 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 we can state that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm just you know my thing is I think my energy level sometimes I have to tone a little bit down generally. <laughs> because I I do get it I'm a I'm a you know I do get excited and that definitely comes across when I speak to groups there's no question about it well good uh, I, that's and, not a bad you know, thing I, that's not a yeah, bad thing I, 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 don't do misunderstand me yeah. I I don't want you to tone down your your energy your enthusiasm your passion um, I don't want you know I I don't want you to bottle that up by any means no but um, I see your point though well taken yeah mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things I think, and I'm a very high energy person too, Chris, if you haven't figured that out yet, but one of the things I think works in my favor is that because I am a high energy person, when I am talking about something and I lower my energy level and I lower my intensity level, it actually brings in the attention of the audience. Like, wow, she's, she's usually happy and, and, and very energetic. And so when I'm talking about something that I want them to really focus in on and I slow down and I talk a little bit quieter and I talk a little bit with a little more intensity, it's that much po more powerful of a message. So I've learned over the years to kind of work with the energy to help me in the opposite way too. That's a good well, point. When I've seen, I'll be honest, when I've, I've, really, Kelly, I've never thought of that. That's a great point. Yeah, when I've seen Kelly, uh, that's a, a way that she emphasizes certain points Right. is by actually toning down the energy volume. Um, and then it's just a way to change the channel. Um, you know, uh, Two hours of super high energy can can be a challenge to follow. Two hours of super low energy, no doubt, is a kiss of death. Mm -hmm. um, what what mm -hmm. tends to, to to be the easiest for folks to engage with and follow is lots of energy, but that where that energy level from the facilitator and leader does indeed change periodically, even if it's just briefly. You know, and then of course, Chris. You know, like the video clips, those serve as a change of channel. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, going from explaining something to asking a question and letting your participants talk, that serves as a change of channel. Having us write things down on a sticky note and post it, you know, those are right. all things that, that, that uh, other ways to, to change the channel for the, um, your workshop participants. Right, right, exactly. Yep. All right. Well, would you want to go through um, like the Elm Tree of Mastery or emotional filling the emotional tanks or honoring the game sort of a demo? Or are you? Did you? I know you went over mistake ritual, but would you like to do that now with Ruben and I here? Well, I could. Uh, I could present the mistake ritual. Okay. No, I know. I talked about how I would do it, but I could just do it. Okay. Well, I mean, that usually comes at the end of the Elm Tree of Mastery principle. Right. Would you? Would you right. want to? Would you want to start with the Elm Tree of Mastery principle, explaining what that is first, and then lead into you know that? I would. I would. I per, well, I mean, I thought about the mistake ritual. Okay. You know what I mean? How I would present that portion of it, to be honest okay. with you. Okay. Well, the, like, the mistake ritual is fine. That's one of the tools. Like, every one of our principles has tools. So that's just right. one specific tool that goes along with the principle. I just wanted to know if you wanted Absolutely. to lead into that with the principle first. Um. No, you know what? I would just go. I'll just go right with the, the mistake ritual. I think if I were to present it, obviously that would be first. Okay. I would yeah. go over everything prior to that. I'm not exactly sure. You know, uh, when when a workshop is presented, I think I, I I read that usually the the first time speakers or the newer speakers or presenters rather do a portion of the workshop. Is that accurate? It is, and a portion okay. of the workshop would be the entire principle. Okay, so gotcha. The the, okay. the portion would be you would take over like some a veteran trainer would do the introduction 
you would do the Elm Tree of Mastery full principle gotcha. from beginning to end, gotcha. or okay. honoring the game, or filling the emotional tank. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. So that's why in this demo we were going to have you present just a portion, just to see, because right. really okay. the idea of the demo is not pass or fail the course. It's to see yep. if Ruben and I feel confident enough to send you out in front of a live audience to be able to present that portion. Yeah. Well, so, to be so honest, can, I, can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Sure. Can I make a suggestion, Chris? And yeah. uh, you know. Uh, Chris was prepared to do his opening, you know, talk about his opening, and he was prepared to talk about the mistake ritual, okay, mm -hmm. which he did, mm -hmm. and yeah. then he and then he switched modes on the intro, went back and did it more as a facilitation. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think we should I think we should schedule another time mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. Chris does Elm, and he he starts right there. Uh, actually, is this the first slide of Elm? No, back up one. Keep backing up. Yeah, so so that he, he he starts he starts with Elm and whether, whether he starts with I mean whether he starts with the the, the We Are Marshall videos mm -hmm. or whether he starts with the the first Elm slide it, you know but and then he takes us through that principle I think that's what we should do okay. and 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 Chris the mode we want to see you in is something like this okay so now that we've um, now that you know what the, the three principles are called. Let's find out what they're about. Let's start with this Elm Tree of Mastery. Have any of you seen the movie We Are Marshall? Right. Yeah. Tell, give me give me a, a tidbit of what it's about. You, you know. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna talk to Kelly and I like that, and we're gonna respond to you. So I'm gonna say, oh yeah, that's that movie that where the plane crashed and most of the players died, and I think it's right. a true story. Right. And you'll go, that's right. Here it is. And then you you know, and then and you're gonna you know, so you're gonna be in that mode as opposed to. As opposed to the mode where you're explaining to us how you're going to do it, right? You're actually going to do it. Okay, right. Gotcha. So, so I don't know how we want to go about making that appointment, but that's yeah. what I would suggest. I mean, we can set it up for some time. I have, I still have people that are doing their their final mock demonstrations next week, so okay. we can uh, we can plan it for a day next week. I have, I already have uh, two people going next Thursday at twelve o'clock. If that's, I don't know if that's available for you or any time around there would be fine. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you could just let me know some other dates and times that are of it that you are available, and we'll set that what, up. What about this same same day of the week and same time, but just next week? Does that work for you guys? Uh, you know, it doesn't work for me, unfortunately. Okay. 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 Um, next Thursday looks pretty good, but I'll send you a confirmation email, Kelly. Okay, that's great. Okay. Yep, and I, as I said, I have someone going at 12 and someone going at 12.30, so if you wanted to do 11.30 or, or after that, that would be fine. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, great. All right, thanks, Chris. We're, uh, I think your intro is great. I love your ideas, and I, and I love your energy, so I well, think you're you know, on the right track. You, I need to be more prepared, to be totally honest with you. That's the problem. I have to just get a lot, way, way more prepared, and I'll do fine. If I, you know what I mean? But. Yep, I understand. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Do you have anything else, Ruben? Yeah. Or are you good? Okay. No, I'm 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 good. Okay.